Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Mrs. Rodriguez's YouTube channel. Here on this channel, I'm going to be utilizing it for our new chapter book, and I will be uploading daily chapter read-alouds. With that being said, I am so excited that y'all are going to be tuning in to watch these chapter read-alouds. Our new book that we're going to be reading is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. This is a 4.9 reading level, and if we decide to take an AR test in the future, it's worth 11 points, okay? The genre is fiction. It, is, it does fall in the children's literature area as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Keep in mind that every time we begin to read something, we wanna set a purpose for reading. And because the genre is fiction, our purpose for reading would be to entertain. We're reading for pleasure, okay? So we're going to read chapter one today, but keep in mind some of these questions as I begin to read, okay? I'm gonna ask you the questions now, and then when I'm done with the chapter, we'll go ahead and answer them. So some of the questions would be, who are the characters? Who are the main characters? We're only reading chapter one, so it should kind of give us uh, maybe a character or two, keep in mind for that. Also, we wanna know where does the story take place? Where does it open up at? Another thing is, if we look at the title, if we look at the picture, why do you think the author chose the title or the images for the book? Here's the front of the book, hopefully you can see it. And then here's the back of the book, okay? Why do we think the author chose the title, Where the Red Fern Grows, and why did he use that image? If you notice that there is a little boy with two dogs. So perhaps the story is gonna be about a young boy with two dogs. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into chapter one of Where the Red Fern Grows. Chapter one. When I left my office that beautiful spring day, I had no idea what was in store for me. To begin with, everything was too perfect and anything unusual to happen. It was one of those days when a man feels good, feels like speaking to his neighbor, is glad to live in the country like ours and proud of his government. You know what I mean. One of those rare days when everything is right and nothing is wrong. I was walking along whistling when I heard the dog fight. At first, I paid no attention to it. After all, it wasn't anything to get excited about, just another dog fight in the residential area. As the sound of the dog fight grew near, I could tell there were quite a few dogs mixed up in it. They boiled out of the alley, turned, and headed straight towards me. Not wanting to get bitten or run over, I moved over to the edge of the sidewalk. I could see all the dogs were fighting once, fighting one. About 25 feet from me, they caught him and, and down he went. I felt sorry for the unfortunate one. I knew if something wasn't done quickly, the sanitation department would have to pick up a dead dog. I was trying to make my mind to help I was trying to make up my mind to help when I got a surprise. Up out of the snarling, growling, slashing mass reared an old red bone hound. For a second, I saw him. I caught my breath. I couldn't believe what I seen. Twisting and slashing, he fought his way through the pack and backed up under a low, backed up under the low branches of the hedge. Growling and snarling, they formed a half moon circle around him. A big bird dog, bolder than, the, bolder than the other ones, darted in. The head shook as he tangled with the hound. He came out fast and fell over backwards. I saw, that in, I saw his right ear was split wide open. It was too much for him, and he took off down the street. Like a scout, like a scout, like a scowled cat. The big ugly, ugly cur tried to lick, tried his luck. He didn't get off so easy. He came out with his left shoulder laid open to the bone. He sat down on the rear and let the world know that he had been hurt. By this time, my fighting blood was boiling. 
It's hard for a man to stand and watch an old hound fight against such odds, especially if that man has memories in his heart like I had in mine. I had seen the time when old hound like that had given his life so that I might live. Taking off my coat, I wadded in. My yelling and scolding didn't help, didn't have much effect, but the, but the swinging coat did. The dog scattered and left. Down on my knees, I peered under the hedge. The hound was still mad. He growled at me and showed me his teeth. I knew it wasn't his nature to fight a man. In a soft voice, I started talking to him. Come on, boy, I said. It's all right, I'm your friend. Come on now. The fighting fire slowly left his eyes. He bowed his head and his long red tail started thumping the ground. I kept coaxing. On his stomach, an inch at a time, he came to me and laid his head in my hand. I almost cried when I saw it. His coat was dirty and mud cake. His skin was stretched drum tight over his bony frame. The knotted joints of his hip and shoulder stood out a good three inches from his body. I could tell he was starved. I couldn't figure it out. He didn't belong in town. He was far out of place with the boxers, poodles, bird dogs, and other breeds of the, do of, of the town dog. He belonged in the country. He was a hunting hound. I raised one of his paws. There I read the story. The pads were worn down slick as they rid on an apple. I knew he had come a long way and no doubt had a long way to go. Around his neck was a crude collar. The clo on closer inspection, I saw it had made a piece, excuse me, on closer inspection, I saw it had made from a piece of check line leather. Two holes had been punched in each end and the ends were laced together with bailing wire. As I turned the collar with my fingers, I saw something else. There, scratched deep in the tough leather, was the name Buddy. I guess that was crude, scribbly letters and probably been written by the little boy. It's strange indeed how memories can lie dormant in the man's mind for so many years, yet those memories can be awakened and brought forth flesh and new just by something you've seen, or something you've heard, or the sight of an unfamiliar face. When I saw it had warm gray eyes and of the, what I saw in the warm gray eyes of the friendly old hound brought back wonderful memories. To show my grat gratitude, I took hold of his collar and said, come on boy, let's go home and get something to eat. He seemed to understand that he had found a friend. He came willingly. I gave him a bath, rubbed all the soreness from his muscles. He drank quarts of milk and ate all the meat I had in the house. I hurried to the store and bought more. He ate until he was satisfied. Slept all night and most of the next day. Late in the afternoon, he grew restless. I told him I understood and as soon as it was dark, he could be on his way. I figured he had a much better chance if he left town at night. In the evening, a little uh, after sundown, I opened the back gate. He walked out, stopped, turned around, and looked at me. He thanked me by wagging his tail. With tears in his eyes, I said, you are more than welcome, old fella. In fact, you've, you, you could have stayed here as long as you wanted to. He whined and licked, his head, licked my hand. I was wondering which way he'd go. With one final whimper, he turned and headed east. I couldn't, help, I couldn't help smiling as I watched him trout down the alley. I noticed the way he, his hid quarters shifted over the right, never in line with the front, yet always in perfect rhythm. His long ears flopped up and down, keeping time with the jogging motion of his body. Yes, they were all there the unmistakable marks of a hunting hound. Where the alley emptied into the street, he stopped and looked back. I waved my hand. As I watched him disappear in the twilight shadow, I whispered these words, goodbye, old fella, good luck and good hunting. 
I didn't have to let him go. I could have kept him in my backyard, but, but to pin up a dog like that is a sin. It would have broken my heart. They will live, they will live. The will to live would have slowly left his body. I had no idea where he had came from or where he was going. Perhaps it wasn't too far, or maybe it was long, long way. I tried to make myself believe that his home was in the Ozark Mountains, somewhere in Missouri or Oklahoma. It wasn't impossible, even though it was way long, it was long way from the Snake River Valley in, o in Idaho. I figured something drastic must have happened in his life, as it was very unusual for a hound to be traveling all alone. Perhaps he had been stolen, or maybe he had sold, had been sold for some much needed money. Whatever it was it had, it had, that had interrupted his life, he was trying to straighten it out. He was going home to his master he loved, and with the help of God, he would make it. To him, it made no difference how long the road or how rough the rocks were. His old red feet could help jogging, his old red feet would keep him jogging along on and on, miles after mile. There would be no crying or giving up. When his feet grew tired and weary, he would curl up in the weeds and rest. Water from the rain puddles or mountain streams would quench the thirst and cool his hot, cool his hot dry throat. Food found along the highway or the offering from a friendly hand would ease the pangs of hunger. Through the rains, the snows, or the desert heat, he would jog along, never looking back. Some morning, he would be found curled up on the front porch. The long journey would be over. He would be home. There would be a lot of tail wagging and a few whimpering cries. His warm, moist tongue would, would caress the hand of his master. All would be, all would be forgiven. Once again, the light would shine in the dog's world his heart would be happy. After my friend had disappeared in the darkness, I stood and stared in the empty valley. A strange feeling came over me. At first, I thought I was lonely or sad, but I realized that wasn't it at all. The feeling was a wonderful one. Although the old hound had no way of knowing it, he had stirred memories of, of he had stirred memories and what priceless treasures they were. Memories of my boyhood days and old Casey baking powder cans and two little red hounds. Memories of a wonderful love, unselfish devotion and death in the saddest form. As I turned to enter my yard, I started to lock the gates. And then I thought, no, I'll leave it open. He might come back. I was about halfway to the house, then a cool breeze drifted down from the rug tendons. It had a bit in it. It had a bite in it, and goosebumps uh, jumped out of my skin. I stopped at the woodshed and picked up several sticks of wood. I didn't turn on any lights on entering the house. The dark white atmosphere was a perfect setting for the mood I was in. I built a fire in the fireplace and pulled up my favorite rocker. As I sat there in silence, the fire grew larger. It crackled and popped. Firelight shadows began to simmer and dance around the room. The warm, comfortable heat felt good. I snuck a match to light my pipe. As I did, two beautiful cups gleamed from, a man from the mantle. I held the match up so I could get a better look. There they were, sitting side by side. One was large, one was large with a long upright handle that stood out like wings on a morning dove. The highly polished surface gleamed and glistened with a golden shin, sheen. The other was smaller and made of silver. It was neat and trimmed and sparkled like a white star in the heavens. I got up took them down, there was a story in those cups, a story that went back from more than half a century. As I caressed the smooth surfaces, my mind drifted back through the years, back to my boyhood days, how wonderful those memories were. Piece by piece, the story unfolded. So that was chapter one of The Red Fern Grows. Coming back to those questions that I initially asked you, 
um, was who were the characters in this story? We only read through chapter one, so the character in chapter one would be Billy. Second question was, where does the setting take place? If we uh, noticed, when I read a couple of pages, the setting was in the Ozark Mountains of Oklahoma. Now, um, tune in to me daily because I'm gonna be reading chapters. Tomorrow I'll upload chapter two. I hope you really enjoy this book, because I know I do. And I'm gonna be very excited that y'all are gonna be tuning in daily to watch these videos. If you have any questions or need a copy, would like a copy of this book, let me know because I could get that to you. Um, thank you again for tuning in. And again, if you have any questions, let me know.